I'm Dr. Anita Clayton, Professor and Chair of Psychiatry and Neurobehavioral Sciences at the University of Virginia School of Medicine in Charlottesville, Virginia. I'm Dr. Christina Della Janitas, and I'm a professor of psychiatry, OBGYN, and molecular medicine at the Donald and Barbara Zucker School of Medicine at Hofstra Northwell. Our third objective is to review the clinical trial data for approved and emerging GABA targeting neuroactive steroids. You heard a little bit about the new data related to how neuroactive steroids may be involved in depression in MDD and PPD. But use of these neuroactive steroids or synthetic forms of it or uh, analogs to any of them may in fact create a very different scenario for correcting those functional impairments in uh, neural networks. One of the things that is very beneficial is a short course of active treatment. But despite that short period of treatment, there's a long duration of effect it's maintained, potentially because of the interaction both with synaptic and extrasynaptic receptors. Also, tolerability is good, and again, it's during a short period of treatment. And the efficacy has been found with some of these agents to be superior to placebo. And if it's acting rapidly, then that's just going to contribute to better adherence, um, better outcomes because patients will feel that this is being effective and will continue their treatment. Again, remember, it's a short period of time, so they don't have to continue on these medications chronically. Indeed. So the first neuroactive steroid I'd like to speak about is Rexanolone. Rexanolone is a synthetic allopregnanolone in an IV formulation. It was FDA approved for the treatment of postpartum depression in adults in 2019. Um, as noted, it's administered as a 60-hour infusion, and the administration of Rexanolone must be supervised by a healthcare provider. The FDA issued a box warning due to the risk of excessive sedation and sudden loss of consciousness. Therefore, patients must be monitored for 12 hours after receiving Rexanolone, and it's only available through a restricted program under a Risk Evaluation and Mitigation Strategy, or REMS. Rexanolone was studied in two placebo-controlled phase three studies in women aged 18 to 45 with severe and moderate postpartum depression. Two doses were tested as a 60-hour infusion, either 90 micrograms per kilogram per hour and 60 micrograms per kilogram per hour. And baseline standard oral antidepressant use was reported for about 23% of patients. The primary endpoint was the mean change from baseline and depressive symptoms as measured by the HAMD total score at the end of the infusion, so at hour 60. And study one in women with severe PPD at 60 hours, the least squared mean reduction in the HAMD 17 from baseline was 19.5 points in the Bruxanolone 60 group and 17.7 .7 points in the Bruxanolone 90 group, compared to 14 points in the placebo group. In study two, in women with moderate postpartum depression at 60 hours, the least square mean reduction in HAMD total score from baseline was 14.6 points in the Bruxanolone 90 group versus 12.1 points for the placebo group. Sustained HAMD reduction continued through day 30 of follow-up. Seranolone is an oral treatment that is a synthetic analog of allopregnanolone. Therefore, it is a positive allosteric modulator of both synaptic and extrasynaptic GABA-A receptors and is a neuroactive steroid. The clinical trial development program included five trials in major depressive disorder and two trials in PPD. The landscape or MDD trials included a phase 2B study in MDD the Mountain Study, Waterfall, Shoreline, and Coral. The first three are randomized placebo-controlled trials, and Shoreline was administered as an initial treatment, and responders were then followed for a year and treated intermittently as needed. And Coral was starting both an antidepressant and Zoranolone uh, in patients with major depression. Patients in the NEST PPD program of Skylark and Robin were treated with 14 days of Zoranolone versus placebo 
in a randomized controlled trial. The doses ranged from 20 to 30 to 50 milligrams in the daily dose. The 30 milligram dose was used in the MDD-201B trial, and it was significantly different at day 15 in terms of the HAMD-17 from placebo with minus seven points. The Mountain Study looked at a lower dose of 20 milligrams and separately a 30 milligram dose as well as placebo. And what was seen was not any significant difference from placebo with 20 milligrams, but the 30 milligram doses did show a change from baseline of minus 12.6, but it did not differ significantly from placebo at day 15. Initial responses were found to occur after two treatments at day three, and these were significant and persisted in this trial until day 15. The waterfall study used the 50 milligram per day dose. It resulted in a minus 1.7 HAMD score at day 15 and was also found to be significantly different from placebo. The rapid onset was seen here as well, occurring also after two treatments at day three. And HAMD improvement was retained at day 42 in over 85% of the patients. Shoreline used both 30 milligrams and 50 milligrams, and the endpoint was HAMD 17 scores at day 15. The change from baseline for 30 milligrams was minus 15.2, and for 50 milligrams, a decrease of 16 points. There was no placebo in this trial, and about 80% of people who, taught, who received the 50 milligram dose when followed over a year needed one additional dose, and it came after 250 days. And about 67% required only one additional course of treatment if they received 30 milligrams at initial intervention. Individuals who required three, four, or five additional treatments are likely to have a shortening time period between their response and a declining response. So one or two treatments in a year is, is great for 80% of people at the 50 milligram dose. The CORAL study was looking at initiating an anti, a standard of care antidepressant and a 50 milligram dose at the same time. So in these other studies, about 30% or less of the patients came into the trials on a standard antidepressant therapy at, at a therapeutic dose, and they were maintained on that through the study. In CORAL, they were entered into the study on no antidepressant and received either an antidepressant and placebo or an antidepressant and 50 milligrams of zoranolone. And at day three, the HAMD decline was 8.9 points with the 50 milligram per day dose, and this was statistically superior to the antidepressant alone. The mean change over course of treatment was about 11.7% decline. Those who received the standard of care antidepressant and placebo took a much longer time to improve as we see in our clinical treatment of patients and was relatively good response at the end of treatment. The Robin study was a double-blind placebo-controlled trial that evaluated the efficacy and safety of a 14-day treatment course of ziranolone, 30 milligrams, on depressive symptoms in women with severe postpartum depression. The primary outcome measure was the HAMD-17 change from baseline at day 15. At day 15, Patients treated with zoranolone had a statistically significant improvement of 17.8 points in the HAMD-17 score compared to 13.6 for placebo, with statistically significant reductions in the HAMD-17 compared to placebo maintained through the end of the four-week follow-up. At day 15, 72% of patients receiving zoranolone achieved a response compared with 48% who received placebo. The Skylark study was a phase three double-blind randomized placebo-controlled trial 
that evaluated the efficacy and safety of zoranolone 50 milligrams as treatment for patients with severe PPD. Skylark met its primary endpoint with patients receiving zoranolone versus placebo, achieving significant improvement in depressive symptoms measured as change from baseline in the HAMB-17 at day 15. And the reduction was a least square mean change of 15.6 versus 11.6. Skylark also met all of its key secondary endpoints. Patients who received zoranolone versus placebo exhibited significantly greater change from baseline in the HAMB-17 at days 3, 28, and 45. Ganoxalone is a 3-beta methylated synthetic analog of allopregnanolone, and it is also in development for the treatment of unipolar PPD. Ganaxalone, like allopregnanolone, is an extrasynaptic and synaptic GABA-A receptor positive allosteric modulator, but it differs significantly in its lack of affinity for estrogen or progesterone receptors. Trials of ganaxalone have included both an IV formulation and oral formulation, but its further development appears halted. The Magnolia study was a phase two double-blind placebo-controlled multiple-dose escalation study of women with severe postpartum depression. Part one of that study evaluated a 48-hour IV infusion of ganoxalone, and part two evaluated a six-hour IV infusion followed by a 28-day oral regimen compared to placebo. The efficacy endpoint for part one was a change from baseline in the HAMD-17 score at 60 hours post-start of infusion, and for part two of the study at day 29. In part one, the high dose of 140 micrograms per kilogram per hour was associated with a change from baseline in HAMD of 16.9 at 60 hours post-start of infusion. In part two, patients treated with IV followed by oral ganaxalone had a mean reduction from baseline in their HAMD score of 13.6 points versus 11.5 points with placebo at day 29, according to data published on clinicaltrials.gov. The Amarillo study was a phase two dose optimization study. And here patients with PPD received oral ganaxalone um, at dinner for 28 days, or patients received um, the same dose of oral ganaxalone at dinner and bedtime for two days, followed by a dinner time dose of an uh, elevated dose for 26 days going forward. The primary outcome measure for it was the change from baseline in the HAMD-17 at day 29. The low dose showed a mean HAMD-17 reduction from baseline of 12.2 points at day 29, and the high dose was associated with a mean HAMD-17 reduction of 14.5 at day 29. PRAX114 is also a GABA-A positive allosteric modulator thought to act more at extrasynaptic receptors as opposed to synaptic receptors. It was under investigation for treating major depressive disorder. A phase 2A study evaluated safety and tolerability using three dose groups, no placebo. Those doses were 40 milligrams, 60 milligrams, and 80 milligrams. And a reduction in HAMD-17 points was seen at day 14, ranging from between 15 to 19, depending on the dose. This led to the phase 2-3 ARIA trial, which also evaluated safety and efficacy, but did use placebo. Unfortunately, top-line results did not achieve statistically significant separation from placebo, and so further investigation of PRAX114 was halted. Across these investigational agents, these neuroactive steroids, we see a similar side effect profile emerge. Um, we see sedation, dizziness, dry mouth, and diarrhea as some of the more common adverse events or side effects from both the FDA brexanolone and the other neuroactive steroids under investigation. In summary, the initial trial results evaluating neuroactive steroid therapies demonstrated promising results for treating both major depressive disorder and postpartum depression. Neuroactive steroid therapies have the potential to change the treatment paradigm, giving the fast onset of action, the shorter duration of treatment, and also um, the long-term maintenance of effect. Neuroactive steroid therapies also 
because of these um, uh, changes to the paradigm, really start to address current gaps in our available treatments for patients with both major depressive disorder and postpartum depression. Thank you.